Hello, in this video, join me as we continue the book, The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki, the one who wrote the famous book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And in this particular video, he's explaining the difference between a self-employed person and a business owner. I think this, you'll find something to learn from that. Because many self-employed people call themselves business owners. But after today, you're going to know the real difference between the two. Sounds interesting? Please join me. Hello, welcome to Take a Step to a Better You. On this channel, I share what I know and continue to learn. And in this one, you're going to learn the difference between a self-employed person and a business owner. And we are learning that from the book, The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki, the one who wrote uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the famous book. And if you are new, my name is Sherifa Nakalema. I'm a business owner here in Virginia, USA. This is video number 14. I'm reading the same book, video number 14, and it was, we're just on chapter two. So if any of that sounds interesting, because here I also, okay, I read the books and the books are going to be most about money and business, but then I also do motivation. I Soon I'll also go back to YouTube tips. So if any of that sounds interesting, the message of taking a step to make our life better, because that's what I do here. My message is all about leading to that, taking a step to make life better. Any of that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to this channel, coming back, sharing my messages, and most especially, leaving a comment. Don't forget to like the, the video if you find something interesting. And for those of you who uh, said yes, you keep coming back, especially on the premiere, appreciate you very, very much. I don't think I said my name. My name is Sherifa Nakalema, I'm a business owner here in Virginia. You say we're about to see if I'm really a business owner because that's what this particular video is about. Showing the difference between a self-employed person and a business owner. I'm about to discover if I am a business owner. Maybe I'll start changing the, what I say about myself. Okay. This book, if you want to get it, it's a free audio. The links are in the description. Free audio. And you can buy the real book. The, the link there to Amazon, through my website, honestsoul.com. And also, if you want to, to watch those videos that we finished, number one, including this one, 14, all the way, I pin a comment. I put a comment in the top, uh, on the top. And the top comments is my comment. It takes you to all the videos, starting from number one, and also at the end of this video, and in the description. Let's get that out of the way. Now, my schedule. I'm here daily. Daily, with the books, five days a week, uh, Monday through, through Thursday and Saturday. But on Friday, I come with the live. I'm here live. You can join me live. And on Sunday, motivation. Everything is happening at 12.30 p.m. USA Eastern Time. That's American USA, American time. USA Eastern. American has many zones. Okay, so that's my schedule. Now, video, video 14, like I mentioned, is going to show the clarity between a business owner and a self-employed person. Because that's, that's the part I'm reading today. And please, you are going to be patient, those who watch me daily, because I have to finish it. If, uh, when I finish the self-employed, he ends uh, uh, explaining the business owner. We need to do both in the same session. So I, I won't stop reading until I've covered all that. But I have also to remind you what we did in number 13. Number 13, he explained the difference between, in fact, at this point, let me show the, what this whole book is about. It's about the quadrants. According to Robert Kiyosaki, we are in, he learned this from his rich dad. We earn income from four quadrants. Either you are on the left, a, an employee or a self-employed person, or on the right, you are a business owner or an investor. But it could be a mix. A mix, we did all that. He explained how you could earn in, income from. From all of them, or two of them, depending on your life. Okay? And now, in this one, He's going to, to explain, in the, no, number 13, he explained the words those people use. That's when you are speaking to a person who earns from uh, his, his, their money from uh, other employee, you hear the word they use. 
So if you're really interested in this, you need to go back to video 13 to hear the word they use. Because I'm not going to repeat that, but I'm just reminding you what we did in the yesterday video. The words they use are different. The employee, the self-employed, the business owner, and the investor. So that's how you know. They may not even know that, that that's how you know them, but those are the words they use. Okay, that's how you know who you are dealing with. This is a friend, a relative, someone just met. When you hear them talking like that, then you know where they belong. Okay? Now, in number 14, I'm going to read, but just know that at some point, you're going to be very clear on who is the self-employed person and who is a business owner. And he starts, you know, I stop, 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 but something that's still continuing. He had just had a conversation with his rich dad. And rich dad had made a sentence that he's quoting now. So the sub headline here is core differences. And he says that Robert is writing. The reason he would say, he's quoting his rich dad, hear their word, feel their soul. Because his dad had just said that to him, that when you meet people, when you're talking to people, hear they were their words, feel their souls. And he's saying the reason he would say that, hear their words, feel their souls, is because behind the words a person chooses are the core values and core differences of that individual. The following are some of the generalities that separate that separate people in one quadrant from uh the following are some of the generalities that separate people in one quadrant from those in another. Now, he starts with an employee. Remember, I showed you that on the left, the employee. He, when I hear the words secure or benefit, I get a sense of who the speaker might be at the core. The word secure is a word often used in response to the emotion of fear. If a person feels fear, then the need for security is often commonly used a uh, used phrase for someone who comes predominantly from the E quadrant, the other employees. When it comes to money and jobs, there are many people who simply hate the feeling of fear that comes with economic uncertainty, hence the desire for security. The word benefit means people would also like some kind of additional word that is spelled out a defined and assured extra compensation, such as health insurance or a retirement plan. The key is that they want to feel secure and see it in writing. Uncertainty doesn't make them happy. Certainty does. Their internal working, uh, working say, he's quoting, I'll give you this if you promise to give me that in return. They want their fear reduced by the presence of some degree of certainty. So they seek security and strong agreements when it comes to employment. They are accurate when they say, I'm not that interested in money. For them, the idea of security is often more important than money. Employees can be presidents of, empl of companies or janitors. It's not so much what they do, but the contractual agreement they have with the person, organization that hires them. Now, again, he's showing the, uh, the he's showing the quadrant, but I already showed you the E and S and B and I. Now you know what they stand for. Now, we go to the self-employed. That was the employee, self-employed. These are people who want to be their own boss or like to do their own thing. I call this group the do it yourself as. Often, when it comes to the subject of money, a hardcore S doesn't like to have his or her income dependent on other people. In other words, the if S, uh, S's work hard, they expect to get paid for their work. S's don't like having the amount of money they earn dictated by someone else or by a group of people who might not work as hard as they do. If they work hard, they expect to be paid well. Conversely, they also understand that if they don't work hard, then they don't deserve to be paid much. When it comes to money, they have fiercely independent souls. That's a self-employed person. And I think I'm a self-employed person by that definition. So then 
This lady, I'm still on you. I quoted you in the previous video. Uh, are you there? Or oh, you want to be a business owner? Let's wait for business owner, we see. And uh, now he says, the emotional, the emotion of fear. This is a subheading. So while the E or the employee often responds to the fear of not having money by seeking security, the S or self-employed often responds differently. The people in this quadrant respond to fear not by seeking security, but by taking control of the situation and doing it in their own, uh, doing it, doing it on their own. That is why I call the S group the do it yourself group. When it comes to fear and financial risk, they want to take the bull by their horn. In this group, you'll find well educated professionals who spend years in school, such as doctors, lawyers, dentists. All in the S group are people. Also in the S group are people who took educational paths other than uh, or in addition to traditional schools. In this group are direct commission salespeople, real estate agents, as well as small business owners like real uh, shopkeepers, cleaners, consultants, therapists, travel agents, car mechanics, plumbers, carpenters, teachers, electricians, hairstylists, and artists. This group, its favorite song would be either Nobody Does It Better or I did it my way. Self-employed people are often hardcore perfectionists. They often want to do something exceptionally well. In their mind, they don't think anyone else does it better than they do. So they really don't trust anyone else to do it. In many respects, they are true artists with their own style and methods of doing things. And that's why we hire them. If you hire a brain surgeon, you want that brain surgeon to be uh, to have had years of training and experience, but most importantly, you want this brain surgeon to be a perfectionist. The same goes for a dentist, hairstylist, marketing consultant, plumber, electrician, lawyer, or corporate trainer. You, as the client hiring this person, want someone who is the best. For people in this group, money isn't the most important thing about their work. Their independence. Freedom to do things their way and being respected by experts in their field are much more important than mere money. When hiring them, it's best to tell them what you want done and leave them alone to do it. They don't need or want supervision. If you meddle too much, they'll simply walk off the job and tell you to hire someone else. Remember, independence prompts money for this group. They often have a hard time hiring other people to do what they do simply because in their mind, Nobody else is up to the task. Also, if this group trains someone to do what they do, that newly trained person often ends up leaving to do their own thing, to be their own boss, to, to do their thing their way, or to have a chance to express their individuality. Many S types are the self-employed are hesitant to hire and train other people because once trained, they often end up as their competition. This in turn keeps the S type working harder and doing things on their own. And doing things, work harder at doing things on your own, on their own. Now he comes to the B, and when I finish the B, that's when I'll end this video. I, I would have ended there, but I, I, I thought B needs to be defined too, since we are talking about the self employed. Now the B, business owner. This group of people could almost be the opposite of the S. Those who are true Bs like to surround themselves with smart people from all four categories. The employees, the self-employed, the B and the I. Unlike the S, who doesn't like to delegate work because no one can do it better, the B likes to delegate. The true motto of a B is, why do it yourself when you can hire someone to do it for you and they can do it better? Henry Ford fits this mold. As one popular story goes, he's telling a story about Henry Ford. If you are familiar with Ford, a group of so-called intellectuals came by to condemn Ford for being ignorant. They claimed he really didn't know much. So Ford invited them into his office and challenged them to ask him any question. And he would answer it. So this panel assembled around America's most powerful industrialists and began to ask him questions. Ford listened to their questions, and when they were through, he simply reached for several phones 
on his desk and called in some of his bright assistants and asked them to read the panel. The answer, they thought. <laughs> they thought. That's interesting. He ended uh, by informing the panel that he would rather hire smart people who went to school to come up with the answers so he could leave his mind clear to do more important tasks, tasks, tasks like thinking. One of the quotes credited to Ford goes, thinking is the hardest work there is. That's why so few people engage in it. Isn't that interesting? Thinking is what he did. And then he hired experts to do the rest. That's the end of this video. Hopefully I rushed enough to finish it not too long. And uh, there are two things actually I wanted to mention uh, from this one, for, for me. Uh, number one is that, that thing of, of training someone and they end up starting to do what you, you are doing. They become your competition. Like you train them to do things right. Maybe you wanted them, you thought you were gonna, or you hire them to be your employee. Then you train them so well they end up doing exactly what you're doing. So that's why some people put it in contracts that you cannot be a competition. They give you uh, a certain time that you cannot be, you cannot do something they are doing, at least not if they are in that location for a few years. They put in the agreement while they're hiring them that you can't do it. Uh, they, they have a clause, they call it the lawyers to avoid the, them learning, you train them and then they go start something exactly what you're doing. They put it in the clause, in the, in the agreement when you're hiring them. So they don't, they cannot do that after, until after two years, when they choose to leave your job. Then, uh, the, I mean, your company or your business. The other takeaway for me is that I noticed actually my mind right now is to move away. When I call myself self-employed business owner at the beginning of the videos, I think I'm right. That's where my, my brain is going. And I'm moving away from self-employed to uh, business owner because my mind is about hiring the people who know things. And then I just hire this one for that and this one. I put them together, a team. I'm already starting that. So, yes, I'll call myself a <laughs> business owner. I'm moving. Miss Lydia, you, you're going to move too. You have to hire those experts to do the work. Then you do. For me, I do the talking. Like here, the talking I'm doing. Ford was doing the thinking. I'll do the talking while the other people do the other work. Okay, that's the video today, please. What do you, what do you take away? I'll, I'll stop asking for takeaways, please. Put the takeaways in the comments. That way we'll create our video. Remember when I finish a book, I create a video at the end. I use, I pick out those takeaways we are putting and then I quote them in the final video. So please, what's your takeaway for this one? I think most people don't know the difference between a self-employed person and a business owner. Now we know. If you're going to call yourself a business owner, you are not doing the work. You are asking other people doing the work, then you are a business owner, you can move to the other side, the right side of the people. That would be cool, actually. That people just do the work, you pay them. Okay, that's my video today. Like I always end them, I say, take very good care of yourself, take very good care of your families, take very good care of your health. Please like the video and leave a comment that's about the video. Please don't just, I know I, 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 I'm asking too much, I think, I'm so sorry. Don't just say great video, no. Please say something about the video. Because when you say something about the video, we are also communicating with YouTube. They see that people are communicating about the video, and you're communicating with me too. Because I know there are people who come to click on this video, especially the premiums, and they don't watch it. You know, I, I don't think you are aware. YouTube is showing who's coming and who's going. So you come in the chat, you say hello, but then you leave. So it's showing in the graph, it's showing that you left. So please, check a moment. This information is good for you. It's good for you. We're not here just having uh, fun. This is very important information. Please watch the videos and understand and leave a comment. Like I always end them. I think I already said like I always end them. Yes. <laughs> okay. Take a step to better. You leave a comment that's relevant to what I just said. Bye.